So my name is Hilmar Gunnarsson, I'm the founder and CEO of Archeo. And with Archeo, we basically are bringing a collaborative design tool to the market. Ah, hi there, Hilmar. Hi, Owen. To easily sketch new design ideas, urban plans, buildings in VR with other people in real time. So basically, with Archeo, you can easily jump into a shared space with other people and literally draw new buildings, new shapes out of thin air easily. And we basically wanted to do something that's not been done before because VR really has been used only for design reviews in architecture, where you kind of do design reviews or models already done using Revit, uh, Rhino or SketchUp. It's not really been used that much as a creative medium in architecture. But what we envision basically is to make something that's as easy as just sketching on a piece of paper. You just basically pull 3D models out of thin air and then you just step into them as if they're real. It's like you can build a scale model in minutes instead of days and then step into it and modify it from the inside out. And you can do it with people from all over the world, do collaborative sessions, simultaneously carve out new concepts as if they are real. I got 10 minutes with Archeo and I found it really, really simple to use. This was really good. It's, imagine it being like Lego for VR, but there being more options to, to do what you can play with. I'm gonna put the full demo at, after this so you can see exactly what you can do with this software because it's just amazing the amount of options there are. Now, I will say that anybody who says this piece of software is just for uh, architects is quite frankly, in my opinion, doing this a disservice. Why? Because imagine being a comic book artist and you want to create your own metropolis. Why would you do that? Well, you want to make sure that your city, your unique city, stays consistent. You don't want to be drawing different buildings all over the shop all the time. You know you want to make sure that streets stay in the same place and uh, yeah, I mean that's just generally a good idea. You know, just makes your world a little more believable, right? So, you can plot out your world in something like this and if uh, a new place needs to appear, you can put it in and if you're creating your comic with somebody else that they can collaborate with you and if you destroy a building in one issue and it'll stay destroyed. But what you can do is you can go down to any angle, place people in and output reference images for your artwork. How cool is that? You know, you spin it around and get that reference shot. So no more drawing perspective grids. You just, in that little 3D space that you've created your own virtual metropolis, doing that and outputting the perfect, yeah, you get me now. I think that would be pretty cool. You see, you see what I'm saying? Not just that, but there's all kinds of reasons why something like this would be perfect for a lot of different creatives. And of course, this is creating 3D models as well, so you could output this into lots of different, uh, yeah, lots of different programs as well for animators and so on and so forth as well. I'm gonna show you guys the full uh, onstage speech now. Well, pretty much the full onstage speech. So you can find out more about Archeo as well. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will like this as much as I do. Now, for those of you that have tried creative VR apps like Tiltbrush or Medium, and experience the amazing creative freedom you get when designing, painting, or sculpting inside VR, you might find this to be a little bit strange. The fact of the matter is that VR and AR have the potential to become the ultimate creative medium for designers and non-designers alike. And that is especially true for architecture. Instead of sketching on a piece of paper, what if you could sketch just as easily in 3D and then step into your sketch as if it were real? What if you could build a scale model in minutes instead of days and stand inside it and modifications to it? And what if you could bring other people into your design session, show them your ideas, and brainstorm with them about new ideas in real time wherever they are in the world? So with Archeo, we want to reimagine what architectural design can be like when you're not bound by the limitations of current workflows, flat screen design tools, when you can literally pull shapes out of thin air as if by magic. Archeo is basically an object-based modeler and it maintains a spatial database of all objects in the scene and their relationship to other objects. 
And that means that the model remains flexible and editable at any point in time. Now, in using this spatial database, we go to our own collision detection to give you that physical feel when working with the model. So you can basically pass into objects, slide on surfaces, snap to edges and corners. <laughs> Instead of just talking about this, we'd love to show it to you. But first, I have to say, showing our key on a 2D screen really doesn't do it justice. You really have to go into VR2 geometry by just pushing the shape inside. I'm able to edit the geometry by just hovering over it with my laser. I can also do that by picking any of the lines. But I can also reach out into the geometry itself and use it like a physical model, but then in a smarter way with snapping and automatic gluing. Let me delete that, that block. So using that, I can uh, quickly prototype some ideas. I can also distort objects by just picking any of the features in there. And just do some crazy design ideas on the fly. Ah, hi there, Omar. Hi, Owen. <laughs> so the fun thing about this is that all these things, all these features are available in real time in multi-user. So what I'm doing here, Hilmar can help me and join me in this. So what do you think of the design right here, Hilmar? I think it looks pretty good, but what about if we modify it a little bit, maybe change the height a little bit, something mm. like this? That looks good. Let's just add some more detail in here in the okay. voids. And also stretch this one to fit the road a bit. Looks better. Looking good. So I'm going to model a building here to the side of it while you tell the people a little bit more about how to use RQ. OK. So let's show our user interface. So we keep everything very simple. And you can just hover over any of the existing modeling tools in RQ by Clicking it, you can also put your user interface somewhere in the scene where you find comfortable. Let's just help you a bit, Hilmar. Hi there. Can you see me? Yeah, hey. I can see you. <laughs> Let's just put this tree somewhere on that building over there. Maybe just make another copy over there. Maybe we add another one in the park. Hmm. Hilmar, I think we can put this building maybe better on the other side of the block. Let's just okay, let's try it. the entire building like that. Would that be better? I like have a little park here. No, I think it feels pretty good. What if we add maybe a little bit more detail to it, something like this? Yeah, but we have to stretch it a bit, I think. Okay. And maybe let's just put that tree in there. So, <laughs> things look pretty good. Looking great. So what if we want to modify, model something a little bit more complex than this? Okay, let's just teleport up to the God scale again. And let's move a bit more to this area over here. So currently, we only modeled with solid shapes, but I'm also able to make compiled shapes like a stack shape, which automatically adds floor height to my volume. And let's just pick up this volume and line it somewhere here. I can also do these booleans in those volumes, so they work a bit the same. And I can also keep stacking objects on top of objects like that to make floor height. I think that looks pretty cool. So how about if we add a penthouse? Mm, that's a good idea. Let's just add a hollow shape for that. So hollow shapes are parametric and they contain uh, a wall thickness that's fixed. So let's just make a normal solid shape there. And when we start carving into them, it's gar starting to make windows. So we can easily just prototype interior spaces like this. And let's just teleport in there just to see how it is. Looks pretty good here, Omar. If you like, you can uh, join me in. Okay, coming. Hey. Ah, hi there. <laughs> Great view. Yeah, it looks quite nice. Yeah, it looks it's pretty a, good. It's a barricade area, right? Yeah. So, so what do you think about the ceiling height? Do you think it should be maybe a little bit higher, like this? Yeah, that feels better for me. Like that? Yeah. Why don't I maybe add a skylight to get a little bit more light in? That's also great, I think. More luxurious. OK. Let me add some chairs over here, and maybe add a small person so we can get some skill reference. And let's just copy on of those trees over there. Okay. One of those. Yes. Nice. So I think with this kind of view, we should add a balcony on the outside. What do you think? Yeah, let me move there. So let's just select my modeling tool, create a little slab on the outside, maybe create a little balustrade like that, stretch it a bit. Let's also add one here so we don't fall down. So something like that. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. What do you think about the height of this? Should it be a little bit higher, like this? 
Yeah, I think yeah. that would be better, otherwise we fall. Okay. And Pretty cool. So it's probably around noon right now. What would this look like sometime like during the early morning? So let's just have a look. If we change the time back to six o'clock in the morning, it would be something like that in August in London. When we go back to seven o'clock at night, it would look something yeah, like that's that. That's beautiful. So I think this calls for a photo, Johan. Oh, let me grab my camera. Okay, <laughs> cheese. Peace. Looks great. Catch you later. Let's follow you up there. So select one of the tools and let's look a bit at the creation we just made. So this would be our model at 1 to 20 scale. It's pretty fun. Uh, I think this is excellent. So what if we need to think about the program requirements for the site itself? So Archeo keeps track of all the objects and sizes. Uh, we just have to add some programmatic information to it by coloring some of these stacks. And you see it starts updating my totals. Let's just add some more different programs to see how that works. So let's just add maybe some offices in there, the tower, and maybe some commercial area in the bottom plinth. Okay. Then uh, all, of these up, uh, all of these sizes are updated on the fly. So when I change my void, it would automatically convert my uh, new numbers and update the numbers. And I can also show my totals in the scene if I have to have meetings with my clients to talk about uh, the program area requirements. So, Johan, how about if we add maybe a tower somewhere like in this area here? That feels about right. Let's just uh, make a new design option for that. So we can always go back to our empty field. So I'm going to duplicate this scene. And in that scene, I'm going to just move that panel over here. Maybe make a blue stacked tower like that and rotate it a bit to fit the light, road, something like that. Yeah, looking good. Let me just add maybe a bit more detail to it, like this. That looks a bit less boring. Yeah, it looks good. So notice how the areas are recalculating my usable floor area when I'm holding things in my hand. So let's just put this thing over here. And in the meantime, I'm going to jump into one-to-one -one scale because the fun and nice part of this is we have, now we have different options. So I can toggle between my different options and really discuss in real time with other people the changes we just did. So I think we should just keep this rotational tower. It looks quite nice. <coughs> I'm just going to close my options dialog. And Looking good, yeah. So can you sit to the iPad view, please? So as I said, Archeo runs on mobile devices uh, as well as AR, VR devices. So it basically, I have Archeo here on my iPad. And with that, I can see everything that's happened in the scene. I can see Johan working here in the scene visually. Uh, I can even make suggestions to him using the iPad. So what if we do like a design somewhere around there, Johan? What do you think? Uh, let me add something. So something like that, maybe a line to the park a bit more. Okay. Uh, what if we add a tower here? Is that a good idea? Uh, might be blocking our beautiful park again. Uh, maybe just make it a bit tinier and put it all the way here. So um, with all these um, changes we just did, these uh, experiments um, and options, we can export all these out to 3D format so we can uh, so the Revit and Rhino team can take it from here. We can also export images or um, the images or the program area data that came out of Archeo. Uh, or we start a new collaborative session where we import 3D models from other programs, import images as reference or program area requirements to do some program play. And the nice thing of this is this is all collaborative together. So this enables you in, to work in a lot better way. Thanks, Johan. We plan to release the beta sometime later in the summer. Now, this is software, so anything can happen. It might be the fault, but this is our plan. And we'd definitely love to get your feedback on it. So, there you go. Um, yeah, I'm still, I'm still blown away by how capable this piece of software is. I think um, next time I get a VR headset in the studio, hopefully very soon, then yes, 
This is definitely one I've already signed myself up for the beta list on this. I want to get a copy of this in. I want to test this out. I want to show what I think this is most definitely capable of. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I hope that you see as much potential in this software as I do. Let me know what headset you're using, if you're going to go and sign up for the beta of this as well. At the moment, um, yeah, uh, it's kind of for architects, but I don't see any reason why it should be only for architects. Mm. Kind of curious, but for me, I see there being a lot of uses for this. And if more creatives are going to be using it, then maybe that will make them open the doors for what other features they are going to put in there. So, let me know what theories, uh, thoughts and functionalities you think would be good to be added into this from other points of view. You know, if this wasn't just for architects, what would you like to be put into a piece of software like this? Because primarily that's where they're marketing towards this and I kind of, you know, it's very understandable. But, okay, if we were totally going to take this piece of software over, um, yeah, um, and use it for our own nefarious creative needs, you know, as animators, illustrators, creatives, uh, designers, etc., you know, 3D content creators. What other features would we want? Hmm. Comment below. Okay, guys. Until next time, stay creative. I'll see you all later. Have a wonderful day.